वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला प्रोग्राम आई एम प्रोफेसर अजमेर सिंह मलिक एंड टुडे डिलीवरिंग लेक्चर ऑन पब्लिक अकाउंटेबिलिटी द लेक्चर द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस लेक्चर इज टू डिस्कस अबाउट और टू अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट द कंसेप्ट ऑफ पब्लिक अकाउंटेबिलिटी एंड हाउ इट हैज इवॉल्व ओवर द इयर्स बिसाइड and efforts will also be made in this lecture or in this talk to discuss about the various kinds of various types of the public accountability no doubt the process of the public accountability and the different means of ensuring public accountability will also be discussed but those will be in a very summarized manner because there is another module which will discuss these means of public accountability in this course on public administration public accountability what is it let's have a look on it in modern public governance system normally we find that public accountability means a commitment of the governance towards its people the commitment is envisaged in the philosophy of modern democratic state it is believed that the origin of the word accountable is credited to the latin term computer which means to count hence accountability means requiring a person to produce and produce a count of either the properties or money that had been left in his or her care even now the concept of accountability is normally taken in financial context although it has been become only one of the dimensions of the word accountability The scope of accountability nowadays has acquired many kinds of dimensions and naturally the financial aspect has a diminished role or diminished uh, constituent of the wider concept of accountability. First of all let's try to define or let's try to understand the meaning of accountability because accountability is a more generic term and public accountability is a specific term means one of the species of the term uh, accountability let's discuss the meaning given in different different dictionary for example oxford english dictionary defines the word accountable as liable to be called to account merriam webber dictionary defines it a quality or state being accountable especially an obligation or willingness to accept responsibility or to account for one's actions the encyclopedia of governance which is very pertinent to the discipline of public administration and public accountability refers it refers the term accountability that is to both the capacity and obligation on someone to produce an account it means that there is one person who is responsible for the action taken by him or by her so this is in that's one but the action taken by the person are also dependent upon the capacity of that person means merely entrusting a responsibility or making someone accountable does not depends upon the legal framework or i uh, will say the formalized system rather it also depends upon the capacity of the person to uh, to understand that responsibility or that liability which is he is likely to discharge the term is also defined as if it is defined as in this sense as we discussed in the encyclopedia of governance it can be applied both on an individual as well as on an organization means the term accountability does not differentiate between 
the individual and the organization. It is also believed or it is also inferred, rather we say, that it can be assumed or it can be applied willingly, internal or self-imposed, or it may be externally imposed one. Um, again, in simple words say that accountability may be assumed by someone in himself willingly, may not be imposed by outside agency or it may be entrusted or imposed by certain external agency on that particular person and making him liable to discharge certain functions or certain actions. It also, uh, we say, uh, it also, the term accountability does not differentiate between public institutions and the private institution. It also does not differentiate between the political institutions or the administrative institutions. And many times, uh, we say, but one thing is there that its assumptions or its application uh, varies from one organization to another organization or its understanding also depends on from one agencies to another agencies. Moreover, it depends upon the systems, it depends upon the scope, it depends upon the pattern, how we take it as an accountability and therefore, but one thing is quite clear in this case, that whatever the organization or whosoever is the person, performing certain actions in a social context that the accountability is uni universally found in, in the actions of all those persons or all, in all those organizations or agencies. Accountability primary means that someone is answerable to someone else. Again, I am emphasizing this aspect. This is a very important aspect of the accountability means that Someone who is performing the action is answerable to someone else, maybe the external, maybe the internal or to, to the organization and for certain specified task and those tasks are legitimately assigned to the person who is answerable and he, uh, he is also endowed with the, the requisite authority to perform those actions. Again, at the cost of repeating it, I am saying that there is someone who is accountable and accountable to someone else who is external and he is accountable for some actions which are legitimately assigned to that person who is accountable and for performing those actions he is endowed with the requisite authority only that accountability is. This is also known as the process of accountability means it has three components someone who is uh, to so whom it is responsible and the for the action. In case of public accountability, now I'm I'm coming to the word public accountability from the uh, from the accountability. The accountability when applied in the government setting or in public law, that is called uh, that is called the public accountability. It is the accountability which is concerned with the concern for uh, concerned with the elected leaders and the government officials and their actions naturally. Moreover, they, it may be by the law, by the constitution or by, by the traditions also, sometimes it is a tradition also, but it is always as per, uh, as, uh, under the domain of the public law or in, in public interest. Then if accountability pertain, pertains to that, then it is the public accountability. And uh, generally, uh, public accountability depends on certain factors uh, that there are certain components or certain elements of the public ac accountability or the accountability, whatever you take it. First of all, they, it may be related to the capacity to monitor the performance. The question is that the political leadership or the executive who is to whom someone is accountability, they must be they must having the capacity to monitor performance. In other words, we can say public uh, the level or the quality of public accountability depends upon the capacity to perform, uh, capacity to monitor the performance. Second, that is the capacity to invoke sanctions and rewards. Means the person who is made 
uh, who has been made, uh, who has been empowered to uh, to make someone accountable. At the, they must have the capacity to invoke sanctions and rewards also. Then it depends also by the decision taken by them in in ensuring the accountability. Naturally, it is also measured in terms of the discretion exercised by the people or by the concerned one and naturally the action taken on. All these constitutes or these are the interrelated components of the accountability and public accountability. Mohit Bhattacharya in this context regarding the meaning of the uh, accountability states that major concern in, pub in accountability is how to ensure who willed power exercise it responsibly so that they can be held accountability. This is an important aspect that the concern in accountability or public accountability is that whosoever is the whosoever is possessing the powers to perform certain actions, how they have to be made accountable to whom that authority really belongs to. Mohit Bhattacharya has stated three purposes of the accountability. The first one it controls the abuse of bureaucratic power. The second, the, it assures that the public officials will perform in accordance with certain standards and quality. And the third is, there should be a continuous improvement in governance and public, public management be, uh, as a result of this public accountability. I am ex trying to explain the third point that it is inherent if we if we ensure accountability in administration then then that accountability lead to the improvement in the governance and that gov that improvement is a continuous one and that will uh, that will ensure a better public management and uh, public management and that's why there may be the better accountability or better uh, uh, we say uh, public accountability. DFID, that's a, again an international agency that has put uh, the meaning of public accountability uh, as ensuring that official in public, private and voluntary sector organizations. I'm repeating, ensuring that officials in public, private and voluntary sector organization are answerable for their actions and there is redress when duties and commitment are not met. This is a change. There is something which is added to the concept here. The question is that this definition or this meaning that ensures that accountability is not only applied to the public organization, rather it can be applied to the private as well as non-governmental organization. The second, it emphasizes that if there is not a redressal mechanism, a redressal of the grievances of the people concerned or the citizen concerns or the customer concerned, then in that circumstances there is no use of the accountability. And that's why it is, a, uh, it is an advancement on the meaning we have earlier discussed. And officials can be made, according to DFID, uh, officials can be made accountable in four counts. Number one, setting the standards by, by investigating the affairs. Number two, by making them answerable to someone and by imposing certain sanctions if they deviate from the expected pattern of behavior. Now, the second part of this lecture that is devoted to the concept. This is somewhat a serious academic exercise and that's why I'll try to make it in a very slow and by focusing on different aspects and the different scholars who have contributed to the concept of uh, public accountability and accountability. Along with this, because I have divided this lecture on the basis of the view, viewpoints of the different scholars. That is why I will also discuss the different types of the accountability. They have, uh, they, they try to uh, categorize on the basis, uh, on the basis of certain context or certain uh, factors. What are those? First of all, uh, there is one, a journey 
who is a scholar and he consider that the people employ the term in three concrete context means the accountability term is used in three three context he out uh, ajoni outlined it the which are, what are those three the first one it refers to greater responsibility and responsiveness on the part of public officials the second is it is used to allude to greater attention to the community means community must be the focus for uh, for the accountability purpose and the third it means the greater commitment to values these are the three important uh, considerations or three important context in which at journey try to explain the uh, try to explain uh, explain uh, the term or the concept of accountability and suggested that this term terms can be utilized for uh, for different for alternative conceptions means there are four alternative conceptions of the uh, term accountability or the public accountability what are those four this is an important aspect and this is the basic and you come across this kind of the situation in your country in your uh, in your public governance system the first one that there is a symbolic use of autonomy and it is a gesture only the autonomy when given to public official or an agency or an administrative agency it is a symbolic one and it is a just uh, it is a gesture only the an administration may make vague promises about improving accountability mechanism he means there is a promise on the part of the administrative official that i'll make it more accountable or i'll use the a more accountable mechanism for delivering certain services to the citizen but he never follows it that is only as a gesture but the conditions the organizational conditions and the context are such that he may not be able to follow that kind of accountability this is false promise in that sense the second alternative conception of accountability is means the first one is the false one it is a symbolic one if we don't take it as a false one it is a symbolic one the second alternative conception of accountability is it may be an ongoing process as the administrators react to the pressure of a particular interest groups depending upon the power they yield and change in relative power will produce a significant change in accountability in a very simple sense generally an administrative officials react according to the authority or the power of interest groups if the interest group can pressurize the administrative agency or an administrative official then they become more accountable if the power of that particular interest group diminishes over the period of time because of certain circumstances then that same administrative official may not be so accountable as it used it was accountable when that interest group was powerful one means the administrative accountability changes with the changes in the controlling authority that is the political power or the uh, we say the power possessed by the interest group the third alternative conception given by it gioni is relating to the that is relating to the formal legal approach and in this formal legal approach at gioni states formal system of checks and balances which promotes accountability it means there are certain forces behind the scenes which are making the decisions and getting those decisions legitimized through formal system of rules and regulations and the statutory provisions this is also means again it is a symbolic one someone is doing something but being formalized apparently and this is the another approach generally we take it as a formal legal approach of defining the concept of public accountability then fourth that is the guidance approach used by adjoni Uh, adjoni sees accountability as the interactions of all the three we discussed symbolic administrator reacting to the pressure groups 
formal legal approach that interaction of these factors plus a moral base with the administrator playing an active role in mobilizing educating forming new alternatives and coalition building this is a very positive aspect means all the three approaches we discussed that is there but there is certain moral consideration on the part of the administrative official and because of those moral consideration he remains active and uh, we say sensitive to the needs of the people by using or by providing a system which is more accountable to the citizen one this is that kind thus a journey made to understand the dynamics of accountability in real sense it is not a static concept rather it is a dynamic concept it changes with the change in power and uh, uh, senior subordinate relationship and power and uh, we say that whosoever is endowed with the power that kind of the relationship similarly there is another scholar stone uh, he argued that westminster system of the ministerial responsibility or the ministerial accountability they say that there are five aspects of uh, or the five conceptions of the public accountability what are those five conceptions number one there is a parliamentary control over the minister this is one this is the in england or in united kingdom there is a ministerial responsibility and that ministerial uh, relation to the ministerial responsibility uh, stone stated that there are five conceptions of the accountability and those five conceptions are number one the parliamentary control the second is the managerialism how a minister is professional in, in taking the decision or in controlling the affairs under him the third is the judicial and quasi judicial review naturally whatever is performed by the minister whatever the decision is taken those are subjected to the judicial review and the fourth is the constituency relationship this is again a very important one many times there are crises because of this one because politically the uh, politically minister is accountable to the voters and the people whom he whom he is representing this is again a very important aspect collective responsibility and all these things are may be associated with it and lastly it is the market what the market is saying and the uh, what what kind of the control it is keeping on the ministerial accountability this is again a very important and stone has outlined or stone has uh, we say discussed about all these things another scholar Romrek and in Graham they identified both of them identified four types of accountability which are hierarchical legal professional and political this is a traditional concept of accountability another scholar Jabra and Devedi they also defined accountability in the context of public service a little bit different one they have taken the institution of the public service uh, as a focus uh, for defining uh, the public accountability and according to them it is the methods by which a public agency or a public official fulfills its duties and obligation and the process by which that agency or public official is required to account for such actions and according to them there are five elements of uh, public accountability these are organizations number one organizational or administrative those are related to the hierarchical uh, kind of the accountability the second is the legal one again legal one consists of uh, that's relating to the state compliance to the statutory provisions as well as the judicial uh i would say judicial scrutiny scrutiny is a part of it the third is the professional one and when we talk about the performance means how the public official have how the public officials have been able to perform as per the public interest this is another another important thing and the fourth is political one which determines the legitim legitimacy of the decisions and the action taken by the public official and the last one is the moral that is respecting the social system and the five all the five 
components that constitutes the public accountability. So, the concept consists of all these five elements according to the Jabra and the Ved. Now, we are shifting to an important uh, event, particularly during the 1990s when new public management or we say the in a post globalization era there is a change on the public accountability or on the concept of the public accountability if we take if we uh, first of all i'll try to make some uh, some comments how new public management has changed the perspective of governance generally it is considered new public management has brought a paradigm shift in traditional public administrative system and in traditional public administrative law. It has focused on performance and it has focused on policy output. Instead of regular and effective implementation of authority in the traditional public administrative system. New public management system has been able to distinguish between the respective domain of politics and administration. The new public management is advocating for more autonomy for the policy implementation from the legislative branch of the state. Means the administration must be independent in implementing the policy according to the rule of, uh, as per the rule of law. And it must have the freedom so that the performance may be increased and they may be more productive in, 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 in their performance. As a result of the new public management, the political accountability particularly that has become a process relevant. Whereas the administrative accountability has become more focused in terms of output. Means if we the, the, if you take the political accountability and the administrative accountability, the political accountability is a procedural one as provided there in the constitution or the statutory provision. But in case of the administrative uh, accountability, it has become focused on, 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 focused on the output of the administrative official or the administrative organization. The new public management that has brought certain challenges to the concept of to the concept of the public accountability what are those challenges this is a very important aspect the challenges are number one in terms of efficiency new public management advocates for the efficiency that's why if we have to make that we have to make the administration an efficient one we have to make someone accountable for the efficiency then we have to provide certain autonomy it's for example and other challenges like the efficiency are those are relating to the outcome of the public official or the administrative organization that may be relating to the competition that market economy is uh, we say uh, there is a competition in the market economy and the public organization have to compete with the private entity similarly there is a uh, uh, concerns for value for money if, pers if taxpayer is paying some money or for getting certain services. Naturally, it demands efficiency and effective delivery of service. Then again, the government has acquired a catalytic role now. Means it is performing or delivering the services to the citizens or the customer nowadays through the uh, through either through the public private partnership or through the contracting out uh, or contracting out the services to the private entity. In such a situation, that challenge or the concept of accountability has also changed. Not only this one, the government autonomy and the customer orientation approach that has also uh, posed certain challenges or rather it has brought a paradigm shift in the concept of public accountability which uh, we, were, we have discussed and which we, uh, we were following before. Uh, before the advent of new public management in the system. The challenges we discussed with, uh, we discussed with you, they have brought changes in the concept as I stated earlier in terms of three aspects. Number one, in terms of standards, in terms of agents, in terms of the means. Means the standards of the accountability that has changed, the agents who will be responsible, those have changed and means 
how to make them accountable that has changed there is a paradigm shift of those changes now the accountability public accountability or accountability that emphasizes on economy on efficiency on productivity in place of public interest democratic values and political and citizen rights means the citizens needs an efficient administration an economic administration a productive performance oriented administration it may serve public interest or there may be compromise there may be up to a level compromise in public interest democratic values and political and citizen rights of the people and therefore the concern for accountability has changed from collective citizenship to individual citizenship now it is the public administration is not responsible not only responsible rather not responsible to to the society as a whole but it is accountable to an individual citizen whom we ca consider as customer or whom we call uh, whom we consider as the customer and therefore new public management has made the administrative system as a customer oriented one this is an important aspect and the customer sometimes we call them clients also although the users of these words is a, in a particular context and that's not a part of this particular uh, lecture that's why i'm unable to take up that matter now moreover uh, we say that the the availability of the social rights which were considered important in the traditional public administration in the new era that has diminished and individual rights are uh, we say that has become an important one naturally as a result of all this the concept of the political neutrality that has diluted and since the minister has to perform public organization has to perform public official has to perform and that has made the public official or the civil servant subordinate to the political executive and as a result of as a result of that the performance has become important and as a result of that he has not remained neutral rather he has sided with the boss or the political executive and in such a circumstances the traditional concept of the political neutrality that has diluted one there are certain other scholars also two or three i'll take some times relating to that and try to summarize this thing that robert gregory another scholar that uh, he is of the opinion that public accountability is concerned with how well or badly public official both political and administrative operates in the public interest and more with whether they abuse the authority i'm taking up these scholars in a different context although i have discussed about the impact of new public management on the concept of the public on the concept of the public accountability but these are the writers who have given or contributed to the conception of public accountability after in the 21st century of uh, in the 21st century and they consider still they consider as we discussed earlier that no doubt the role of the public interest has diminished because of the new public management the administration has become the customer oriented but the it does not i will say the public ad, ad interest is still there in uh, still there and that's why that uh, that robert gregory is concerned that the public accountability must be concerned with the public interest and it must take into account how well or how badly public official treat or operates in the public interest if they are doing in public interest naturally they are accountable if they are not doing then they are not accountable and corrective actions are required for that purpose moreover the uh, robert gregory is also of the opinion that public accountability is concerned with reducing the opportunity for corruption mal administration and legal impropriety that come to people in position in power means this is somewhat relating to the good governance how to make the governance 
or the actions of the public official both political and executive towards the good governance or the better governance that is in the public interest therefore the effectiveness of this kind of the public accountability depends upon the legal system normally we find the legal system which is obsolete one that has not been able to cope with the new kinds of the situation in administration or in governance but not only the legal system it also depends upon the independence of the judicial system that has been given the responsibility of the judicial or legal scrutiny that's why they consider that the effectiveness of this kind of the accountability will depend upon the legal framework available at a particular point of time in a particular uh, particular country or particular state as well as the independence of the judicial system which can scrutinize the actions of the public officials uh, according to the uh, legal system or the prevalent in legal institutional framework of that particular country and it is also termed as the legal accountability sometimes as the constitutional accountability another scholars taro arkila categorized the accountability into six categories these are based on their features based on mechanism based on the administrative context these are political bureaucratic personal professional four these are traditional earlier stated and that's why i'm not giving much time on this there are two alternative uh, categories of public accountability arkila pointed pointed out those are the performance and deliberations performance and deliberation as a result of the change in the paradigms of the governance and they uh, arkila stated these are the new or alternative conceptions of the public accountability and uh, arkila found that there are there is a shift uh, shift in the locus of power particularly from 1980s onwards late 90s 1980s on what are those shifts in locus of power number 1 there is a forward shift emphasizing the role of international organizations there is a forward shift and that forward shift is uh that is the role of international organization that has increased in the governance second there is a downward shift and that is through the decentralization that is granting local governments with more autonomy and the third shift is from government to private and non governmental organizations these three context or these three kinds of the shift have changed the concept of the public accountability and as a result of this the performance and deliberation kinds of the alternative concepts given by arkila that has become an important one means governance is concerned about the performance governance is also concerned with the deliberations with the citizens or with the customers or the with the clients whatever you call it these are these are the uh, uh, things which are uh, given by uh, taro arkila Uh, relating to the public accountability um, and that's why those are uh, in other words we can say that the traditional accountability nowadays that has been losing grounds or sign uh, we say uh, that has been losing its sign whereas the alternative or new kinds of the performance and deliberation kind of uh, accountability that is gaining grounds nowadays but i Uh, uh but it doesn't mean that there is no role of the traditional accountability uh, it is not substituted rather it is in coexistence with the uh, traditional accountability lastly i discuss about two concept one is the political accountability two types of the accountability rather we say political accountability and uh, administrative accountability there is also need to differentiate between accountability and responsibility first of all let's take the political responsibility what is it normally political responsibility related to the democracy and legitimacy and it means whosoever govern are responsible for their action to the people directly or indirectly this is the political accountability this kind of accountability is external in nature and it depends upon many things first of all 
it depends upon the mechanism of political representation how we are representing how we are electing them in in a in a direct in, in a straight and how we are linking the citizens with their legislators that is the political representatives naturally the electors or the voters or the citizens they influence the behavior of the political representative representatives or control or make them accountable through the electoral process there is that political accountability also depends on the formalized relationship between executive and the legislative powers the question is generally there is a tendency once we elect our representatives they forget about the promises and how to remind them those promises promises recalling them whether we can do or not censoring them i don't know we have, we have not been able to use all these mechanisms or we have only one mechanism that is through the electoral process but the political accountability is considered one of the significant a uh, significant mechanism of control over the political system in a democratic setup we are having to uh, in uh, we are having at present and the nature or the extent of the political accountability in real sense determines the quality of democracy and the quality of the public management means the good governance is largely decided by the elected representative or the political accountability we may be able to enforce in a system this is the beauty of this political accountability whereas the administrative accountability is considered as straight because the administrative official operate in a definite hierarchical structure and there is a division of labor among the administrative officials depending upon the capacities they they are possessing for that purpose the contents and process of decision making are explicitly stated for the administrative officials or the for the administrative organization it is a formal system of accountability administrative accountability is a formal system of accountability and can be easily examined means we can liable a public official or a public agency if it has not performed as per the expected norms or as as per as uh, as expected from that particular official or public agency so administrative official or administrative accountability no doubt it is an internal one it is straight one and it can be imposed but whereas the political accountability is more wider external and it is difficult to be imposed this is the difference as well as the relationship between the political and administrative accountability now we starts with the accountability and responsibility mulgan consider accountability was first conceived in the notion of responsibility uh, uh, he defines accountability as a process being called to account to account someone's authority to someone action a process of giving an account and it is about compliance with the authority accountability means of someone to someone for some actions and it is compliance with the authority means whatever is authority is assigned it you have to act according to that one and it is considered accountability is considered as a negative because it prevent the misuse of power and door to certain officials whereas the responsibility robert gregory said about it that responsibility is about the moral conflicts and issue of life and death means it has a moral contents whereas in case of accountability the contents are political organi- and organizational housekeeping one therefore responsibility is related to the empowerment and independence if you are empowered if you are independent then there is some feeling that you work according to certain social norms this is the responsibility and therefore the responsibility is not negative as accountability is it is a positive one and it requires for the action taken for the betterment of for the better governance therefore there is a distinction between accountability and responsibility although 
according to the Mulgan, the accountability originated in the concept of, in the concept or idea or notion of responsibility. So, that this is relating to the concept of uh, public accountability contribution made by the different scholars we have discussed at length and naturally this concept has given that the process of accountability consists of three things that is first of all that who is accountable we have to identify it to whom someone is accountable it, accountable we have to fix up that one and we have to determine that and the third is for what someone is accountable this is the process and in a process of accountability we have to take the three things in an important way. Lastly, there are certain means and methods of ensuring public accountability. There are two types of means and methods, those are the internal and external. As I stated earlier, it will be discussed in certain other uh, lectures in the course of the public administration but a brief summary about the different kinds of the internal and external means and methods of ensuring public accountability at least we will try to uh, we will in, uh, we will enlist here for your reference the first of all we take up the internal means and methods of uh, ensuring public accountability are there are hierarchical you understand now senior subordinate relationship are there budgetary system is there that budget is controlled by the authorities which are uh, on the uh, which are supervisory in nature then there are the different means of the personal management right from recruitment to the code of conduct disciplinary actions all those things annual confidential reports are there efficiency survey that's an important one professional standards are being laid down in the form of many kinds of uh, uh, many in many formats then administrative leadership is there that is motivating and uh, making the subordinates to be responsible for the cause of our organization and lastly uh, there may be investigations if someone has deviated from the expected behavior pattern then in that case may be investigated and corrective action may be taken in that regard to uh, that is the internal internal means and methods of ensuring accountability in the organization similarly there are certain external means of means and methods of uh, accountability which we, cl we, we classify them that the legislative control these are the parliamentary control in a parliamentary of uh, parliamentary form of governance uh, that's a detailed discussion is required and there is a separate module on it a separate lecture on it similarly executive control is there that is political executive control and then senior subordinate hierarchical system are there judicial scrutiny is there we call it the judicial control and the citizen controls by different means different means means by ombudsman by administrative courts by parliamentary commissions and very popular means and uh, that is lokpal lokayukta etc city uh, so these are the different kinds of the means and methods of exercising control and uh, these controls are uh, uh, are no doubt in a particular context those are and uh, they have the different impact on the uh, on the accountability so these are the different kind of the control and in the last i would like to say the concept of accountability which we discussed in this lecture uh, at the present in the present time that has not confined to the public setting or public administration alone rather it has covered pri pub private sector as well as uh, the non-governmental organizations also and the tools and te tools and techniques which are applied to ensure accountability uh, those are very different and very varied, varied uh, keeping in view the context keeping in view the particularly the situation in a particular uh, area or in a particular cultural setting and uh, as for example the civic societies those have gaining gaining grounds in controlling the administrative system public opinion is also gaining ground media is uh, controlling um, the administration and naturally if they were, those are uh, uh, those are deviating from the patterns 
uh, expected patterns then they try to rectify and by by um, uh, and media media and public opinion uh, criticizes and in the present political setting the opinion is has become a very important one and therefore let's let's hope that uh, that that the nation or the we say the public administrative system will go for better public accountability and in the last again i'll say that for reference for better understanding of the concept of public under public accountability you refer to the module written on this particular topic uh, uh, of the epg part sala program and there are many references given at the end of uh, uh, at the end of that text, e-text provided to you and that will help you in understanding in a more wider way. Whatever the limited times we have in these lectures, we try to explain it in an uh, explicitly manner, but there are many things which may not be understood in the right sense, those may be referred and uh, you can also check your progress uh, by answering or by finding out the answers given at the end of the uh, text. Thank you very much.